Hey guys, Matt Diederich here. Thanks for joining me on another Astro Photography tutorial. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'm gonna make sure that I keep you up to date on some pretty fun Astro Photography content and tutorials. So today, what we're gonna do is go through some editing on a target that I've always, always wanted to shoot from Dark Night Skies, and I finally had the chance a couple weeks ago when I was down in West Texas near McDonald Observatory. What I got to shoot was from Dark Night Skies, the constellation Orion, wide field, and I brought along a tracker so I was able to track the night sky and do very long exposures with this Skywatcher tracker. I was shooting a combination of three minute exposures and then the second night I was doing four minute exposures. So I ended up shooting enough to capture about two and a half hours worth of data and what I was using was this guy right here. I have a Nikon Z6 that has been modified to let in the red emission nebulae and I was shooting it with a 50 millimeter lens. So I was getting some cool wide field data and that is what I would like to show you how to edit today. But don't forget for these kind of targets, a modified camera is really, really important. But I hope you can even get out and shoot it with a stock camera that is that has not been modified to let in the full amount of hydrogen alpha that is emitted by some of those beautiful emission nebulae. In today's tutorial, what we're gonna do is, before jumping into PixInsight, I'm gonna show you how to make a artificial flat frame within Photoshop by using their lens profile feature, and that is a great way to quickly and easily remove vignetting from photographs, and that will help us to create a very uniform and evenly illuminated photograph of that constellation we shot from around the Orion region. So we'll do that first within Photoshop and then we'll save the photos as TIFFs. Then we'll pull them into PixInsight and we'll stack them, combine them, and then we'll start working on that master single image and then cap everything off within Photoshop to make a print-worthy image that we can also share online with everyone. So without further ado, guys, I thank you for hanging out with me on this tutorial, but let's jump into it within Photoshop. What I need to first do is grab these exposures, pull them into Photoshop, and once they're loaded up, let's get rocking and rolling on removing that vignetting. Adobe Camera Raw has opened up our 45 images. You can see different exposure values. The one night we had a lot of air glow going on, so it was very bright, and then the second night, not as much air glow, so the exposures weren't as bright. Now, the easiest way to go ahead and profile all of these images in Adobe Camera Raw, go to your optics pane, choose the profile correction and make sure you select the proper lens a lot of times it will automatically grab the correct lens but if it doesn't use your drop down menu and select the lens you can select all the photos at once by clicking on one of them and then clicking Control a on the keyboard and that's going to make sure it selects all the photos in the series and you can apply the lens correcting so you can see before after and before and after. So you can see it just cleans up some of the vignetting. Now that is done, ready to go. And while we're here, we can also clean up some of the defringing on the stars. I noticed that there's some chromatic aberration. You can remove that by just increasing some of the green slider, for example, on this lens. You might notice sometimes your lens might have the purple chromatic aberration, and you can remove that as well. So you might need to bump it up to a couple and then you should be able to just have nice clean photos from here. Now all those settings are applied to each photograph that we have in the slider because we selected all of them and we're ready to open all of them. Okay awesome so finally all those 45 photographs have opened up in Photoshop with the awesome profiling done so the vignetting has been removed. Next up we're going to go to file scripts image processor and what we're going to do here is we're going to save all these photographs as TIFFs and that will allow us to pull them into PixInsight with the new flat fielding applied. So we'll select the folder that we need these to go into and we'll click run and it's going to save all of those photographs as TIFFs. Now that we have all the photographs saved as TIFFs, we have PixInsight opened up 
and we need to first debare the images within PixInsight because we shot them with that one shot color mirrorless camera. So we'll go to process, we'll open up debare, and I have determined that the sensor there for that Nikon Z6, the bearer pattern is RGGB. So what we need to do is, if you have not already determined which one is the proper debare method, make sure that you can try the automatic method or try these options on one of your photographs and you're gonna see a lot of them look really, really weird and only one of them will look good for your camera. That photograph that turns out in color, of course, is the proper bare pattern that you want to utilize. So I'm going to use the RGGB and I'm going to open up all of those TIFFs that I did and apply the debare method to them and it's going to save them all as debared images. Now with all of those photographs selected, I'm going to go and select the folder that I want them outputted to. I want them set to that same folder I'm using and I'm going to click run. Okay, now that we have those images debared, we're gonna star align them here. So we are going to click the file dropdown and we're gonna select one of those images from our debared photographs and they're gonna be denoted as this symbol. You'll have a D next to them noting debared. So you can click one of them to be the master for star alignment. You can add the remaining ones Click open, we'll set the output directory, and we're gonna click run. Okay, star alignment has just finished up. Now that we have aligned files to one another, what we can do next is we can do the image integration and create one master image. We're gonna select the debared registered images so you're gonna see that they will have a D and then an R next to them. So I'm gonna sort them by the date modified and just grab those debared and registered images. I'm gonna open all 45 of them. I'm gonna use the standard average integration method and I'm gonna click a pixel rejection routine just in case I had any satellites passing through the field of view. A standard Sigma clipping will help reject those bright pixels of an errant satellite passing through the field of view. And with that said, we can click run and it's gonna integrate one master photograph. Okay, so image integration has finished up. We have our main stacked image here of Orion. And next up, we need to do some color calibration and clean up just some of that color detail before we stretch the image. So first up, what we need to do is I drew a preview by clicking Alt N in the bottom corner of the image away from the main nebulosity. I definitely do not want to do a preview on any of the hydrogen alpha areas or the main details of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open background neutralization here and I can also grab it from the main process menu but I made a little shortcut here. So you can go either way and click your background neutralization tool and select a preview for kind of a blank area of the night sky. Grab that preview from your drop down menu and select it as your reference image and drag and drop. You can see that we corrected some of that background. And next, we wanna do the color calibration tool. So again, you can also go to the color calibration menu here and pull it, but I also grabbed it and dragged from here on my desktop. So what I'd like to do is grab that preview for the background, make sure it is that same preview. Okay, with the background preview set, let's go ahead and select a white reference area. For this one, I'm gonna use the star Rigel. I'm gonna click Alt N. I'm gonna grab a little preview of that from the drop down menu and select it as our white reference. Now, if we drag and drop this function, we'll let that run and then we can reset the screen transfer, do a little stretch again. And now the image has been color calibrated, which is excellent. We can close out of this. And what I would like to do is I see a little bit of green cast, so I'm gonna click on our SCNR tool here, open it up, and default settings, always good, drag and drop, and it'll remove some of that green cast we had to the image. So we can do before and after, 
and then we have that green cast removed. Close that. Okay, so cool. We're getting really close to having a final image here. It's amazing how a few clicks of a button can turn an image from pretty bland into pretty exciting. And the next step is one of those key steps and that's doing the arc sign stretch. So let's go ahead and do the all process. Go to arc sign eight stretch here. And you can do a preview. Once you reset your screen transfer function, make sure you reset that. Let's do a live preview here by clicking that open circle. And let's estimate the black point of the image. You can kind of tweak this as you want. You can make it a little bit lighter on the black point. Now you can click apply. It's gonna go ahead and make those settings permanent. And now we have taken the image from linear stage to nonlinear. So we have a stretched image. And if we flip it, you can kind of turn that geometry 90 degrees make it look a little bit more normal for kind of how I was shooting that night. So here you go. Here is what we're working with now. We have a lot of color pushed into the image. That hydrogen alpha area is really just banging off the charts. That is insane. So here is what we have to work with now. Just beautiful. And the hydrogen alpha and then the dark nebula are also just looking incredible here. So this is ready to save as a TIFF and then pull into Photoshop to finalize. Make sure that your TIFF settings on the next step are 16-bit and not 32-bit. Click OK and let's go ahead and open Photoshop and pull this photo in. Guys, I am already so super stoked by this shot just with the level of stretching. So simple, bare minimum stretching that we did in PixInsight. This shot already looks so epic. And it just goes to show you the key, get to dark night skies. No matter if you have a 10 year old camera or if you have the most expensive camera equipment, the key is dark night skies. For this one, we shot it two weeks ago from West Texas near McDonald Observatory. So the night skies were just spectacular. We were dealing with a lot of air glow in the atmosphere so that can kind of wash out some detail, but we didn't have much light pollution barely any and that was the key to shots like this with Orion and getting the nebulosity around it so let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and all I really want to do here is adjust the black levels and maybe tweak some selective color adjustments and aside from that I want to try to keep this as natural as I can and um, and keep it that way because the beauty of this nebulosity popping looks awesome. So let's jump in here to Photoshop. All right, guys, so we're here in Photoshop. We have the image opened up. Now let's just kind of take it in. I mean, this is such a spectacular shot zooming in. You have the Orion Nebula. Look at all this dark nebulae that's involved. You have the horse head, you have the flame, you have beautiful reflection nebulae, and then you have Barnard's Loop just absolutely screaming around the side of Orion all the way down to Rigel. You have the witch head. You go up this way, you have Betelgeuse, which is looking incredibly gold. You have beautiful hydrogen alpha, and then you have dark nebula as well, just to the side of the hydrogen alpha. You have the rosette nebula, just looking so beautiful. And then some additional beautiful emission nebulae up in here and other dark nebulae around the side of Orion. So pretty spectacular, really covering the gamut of some awesome nebulae and beautiful star colors. So what I would like to do I think. Let's go ahead, let's duplicate the layer. You can hit Control J, or you can drag and drop down here to get a new layer. Okay, now you have your new layer made. What I would like to do is, for those of you that have been following along on some of my tutorials, you've been seeing this panel. This is not standard in Photoshop. This is a add-on, and it's very well worth it. I use it a lot for my landscape shooting, but also for this editing with night skies. So it's the TK action panel does a great job at selecting different areas and colors in your images and helping you create new layers. So what I would like to do is I think I just want to make a levels adjustment layer and I can drop down that black point by using this slider on the left and drop it down to just bring in a little bit of contrast into the image. And I don't want to go too dark. I want to look at the histogram here and I want to try to see 
some of the pixels here that we might be clipping, but you also can go to the info tab and you can highlight a little bit of that dark area in space here that is kind of void and check it out. We have some pixel values there that are getting down to zero, which means that they are gonna be getting clipped, but that is because we did that stretch in PixInsight. So you can see, if you start bringing it in, you're gonna start clipping data, which is not good. You start doing this, you're losing a lot of detail because you're pulling in and clipping all those values that you're losing there. So let's bring it back to this curve and you wanna bring it to the side. Something like this might be good. And if you blink on and off, you can see that we added a little bit of contrast. But what I think we should do is now add a curves adjustment. If I just start dragging down the bottom here, it's gonna bring down the darkness. And if I do a point up here and raise it up, that is what's gonna create contrast to the image and that is a S curve, essentially. You can really accentuate that S curve here and do something like this, but that might be a little bit too much for what we wanna do, but that actually looks pretty darn cool. So you can always flatten out the top of your S curve to just retain in some of that detail, but I think that looks pretty wild. So you can kind of see before and after, creating S curves is gonna add contrast. You can see here, what I think we should do is we should be able to maybe add a little bit of blue to this image to retain a little bit more balance in the image. So if you do a color balance layer, what you can do is you can take a slider for the blues and you can just gently nudge the blues in and if you blink on and off you can see now we have such a cleaner color balanced image you know the the witch head here is not a horrible yellow color anymore it's kind of that nice pale gray and that is the key here about using layers and doing these selective adjustments because i can always go back and remove some of that uh, adjustment that we did is not permanent that's the key to using layers and I can also mask in areas that I do not want affected but for this shot I really want this whole image being affected in, in doing global adjustments but I'm gonna actually back down that layer for levels and uh, something like that looks pretty darn cool so I like grabbing as a last little bit is a little iteration of Make Stars Smaller. This is a old school photo plugin that uh, Noel Carboni made and I'm gonna flatten the image and then make a duplicate layer. And then I'm gonna run an iteration of that Make Star Smaller. I believe that plugin is still sold, but like I said, I've had it for 10 years now and it has done a great job, but if you make a duplicate layer so we can adjust it and change the opacity to taste, make star smaller, and then you click play, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that image, it's gonna make a duplicate version of it, and it's gonna analyze all the stars in the image, and it's gonna actually make them smaller, so it's gonna contract them. So you can see when I blink on and off, now it kinda starts making the nebulae, the apparent focus of the image which is pretty cool i really like that and here guys i'm pretty much done i'm ready to save it as an image for the web or make a print of it so easy enough to do you can flatten the image and then a lot of times i like making just small four by six images to share for the web so if you do control alt and i it's going to pull up your image scale size here so i could do six and turn that into a very workable photograph. A lot of times I just set it to 300 DPI and save it. But this is such a super special shot for me because I've always wanted to shoot a long exposure. And this is still just about two hours of data of Orion from a good dark sky site. So hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. As always, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful. Thanks guys, clear skies.